Yeah, so actually I want to give a little twist, though the title says feature flag driven development. I want to talk about, you know, what is the need which with which, you know, feature flags is taking, you know, uh, very good uh, traction. But however, I do think, you know, you should be very careful in adopting. Uh, let's see, you know, how far I'll convey it by the, by the time I deliver. Uh, I mean, I come to the end of the slides. And yes, in case you have any questions, please stop me. We can ask questions then and there. See, uh, what is happening is, you know, a lot of, um, I think, you know, a lot of technologies coming, a lot of requirements coming. Now, everybody wants to be a million dollar customer, paying customer product. That way that whatever was done, you know, 10 years back, 20 years back is already obsolete. Those same policies, same style of working will not work. And these are some of the use cases. In the use case, when you really want to you know, build a product, you cannot assume that you know X Y Z UI will be good. How much you do it, you know, you should have a scope for experimentation. Product manager is not a god that he know he knows everything, but yes, maybe out of hundred things, he may know you know he can experiment with two three and then identify which is better. So now with the old approach of waterfall agile, releasing it you know after so much of thoroughly testing it will not work anymore because you know it is an experiment you know before even uh, saying a release we should know how to experiment it get some feedback and then finalize so that is something you know where all of us have to remember that you know products have become complex the requirements itself on you know the way to handle develop that product have changed and there are some cases you know you have you know uh, I mean, definitely, you know, when you are talking about scale of customers, millions of customers, now how do you, in case something goes wrong, is there an emergency way of, you know, getting back? That's what, you know, is a kill button. So where can I do safely kill something and then, you know, revert back? So these are all some of the things, you know, which I think, you know, most of the time, because, you know, of when people had a lot of time, a lot of luxury, all that may not happen because you know the number of people are also were less. It is highly managed, but slowly it is coming to a level. You know, you should have an emergency kind of thinking. And sometimes, you know, yeah, you also want to educate customers in a very, very uh, small way or you know daily few customers to get the, get the feedback at the same time make sure that you know you give a scope for one user to talk about it so this is where you know can we release a feature not all at once but you know few people at a time and it also helps in safeguarding the stability of the product and also what happens is you know when you really want to build big features it is not advised to invest so much of time and budget without getting the, you know, uh, going to the production early, at least, you know, serve some purpose of that feature. So these are all some of the things um, where, you know, they are being part of non-functional requirements. And uh, there are ways where, you know, yeah, maybe love, what happens you know, if you want to sell few products in a e-commerce, and suddenly, you know, the load has gone up. One approach we all know that, you know, I can scale the hardware. But what happens, you know, yeah, if, my, if my, my software itself is bulky, can I reduce that? So that I, anyway, now when customers are buying electronics, I can always, you know, remove something else in washing machine or whatever it is. So this is the way you should look at, you know, software optimization uh, and then how it is impacting engineering thinking. It is no more waterfall, no more agile. It is much more, or it is combination of this and much more. So, are the use cases clear? Hello. Yeah, clear to me. Yes. Anybody has questions? Okay, I'll move forward. Maybe too early for questions. Okay, yeah, because see, I think, you know, this once you understand the new requirements clearly, then, you know, many things will happen you know, is easy to uh, get to know rest of it. Yeah, somebody was talking. 
Okay, so now basically what I'm trying coming to is, you know, yeah, we all are in a very modern world. Modern requirements are there to build a cloud scale products. And this is where somewhere, you know, the concept of shift left and shift right. We may, we must have learned about, you know, shift left where, you know, can you advance everything? Can you advance testing? Can you advance planning? Can you advance building? But whatever the use cases I've said, you know, they come into the shift right model where, you know, can I test on production? Can I remove some features in the production? Can I experiment with, you know, some of my doubts in the production? So that way, you know, you will see a new trend that, you know, it is no more shift left, but it no more shift right, but it is a combination or a flexibility of having anything anytime. You cannot say that the shift life will replace, you know, shift right or shift replay, that shift right will replace shift left. Both are required. So that way, you know, yeah, if you really look at, you know, from product angle, yeah, there are four ways of shift left where, you know, uh, you you just focus initially on you know unit testing you know uh, integration testing like that and then you know when you really want to go a little more uh, 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 a little uh, towards right is you know can i conduct uh, acceptance testing early otherwise you know when you get into devops series you know you say you know can i release it short in you know, very very small increments and then, you know, yeah, somewhere, you know, you also focus on, you know, can I build my product also in a modular way where, you know, my, my model, my business model starts becoming more and more clear. So this is some way of, you know, uh, you will see industry talking about four types of shift left tests. And there are many kinds of shift right also, like A-B testing, which we are very popular, uh, canary release, blue-green deployment, can I create problems, you know, in a production and then see that my system is able to recover? And performance testing, make sure that, you know, I'm always performing with, you know, good monitoring and all. So now, as I said, you know, please look at all these are the new requirements which developers have to handle it. Without developers, you know, yeah, I mean, you cannot do all this. Not that, you know, when you say, when you remove something, yes, some part of it can be handled by DevOps. But there are ways even, you know, within your code, you should be able to say, is my um, microservice resilient enough? Can I throttle number of requests? So that way, you know, shift right, you know, will give a lot of feedback for developers to, you know, handle the NFRs. So knowing the use cases and knowing those in, in terms of industry jargons or requirements or, you know, uh, the yeah, shift left and shift right. Now, this is where we can talk about what is a, a feature flags. Feature flags is all about enable and disable features or subsections of the application remotely without modifying the source code or rebuilding and redeploying the application. Now, the difference between shift left and shift right is, you know, shift left, there are a lot of, you know, I mean, it, it has not gone into the production. There are developers, there are testers. But when you go to shift right, mostly, you know, the developer should enable shift right lab should happen, but it is handled and the operations of the really happen, uh, handled by either project manager or DevOps team based on the features given by the developers. So that is where we are saying that, you know, every time you want to remove a feature, it is not that developers are rebuilding it. It is not that the developers are, are I know i mean i think removing that code and then rebuilding it and redeploying it it should just happen like that somebody just clicks on the you know somewhere and then automatically your production system should start behaving as per those changes that is the core of uh, feature flags and the same thing you know it did exist yeah i think yeah maybe uh, like uh arvin said yes i'm a veteran i've seen so many products hundreds of products but these are all nothing new. Only thing is they are coming out uh, at a much more higher level impact where people are understanding the importance. Where some of the, I think, you know, in the old age, we used to call it as a configurability. Can I configure my application at runtime? Or you know, at, at, you know when I'm about to start, I mean, with the restart, can I do configurability? Now that configurability became, you know, from restart, it became dynamic. 
now customization can i you know uh, control my ui where you see in a portal where you can always you are provided with you know templates which way you want to have a look and feel uh, feel and other is you know other name is feature flags release tags feature pipers i mean these are all similar names uh, so don't get confused uh, but i will also introduce another name feature pluggability uh, but that that you will know in the end so now this is again you know yeah it's taken from um, thoughtworks uh, hero um, where he's, he classified you know i think as if somewhere you know there is no end for class categories of feature flags uh, we understand flag as a true or false right all of us understand flag in a software world as a true or false yes right so yeah just bear with that name uh, because i think you know yeah thinking it as a true or false is a really really horrible technical debt but anyway i think you know the industry knows it as feature flag so now if they want now once you have too many flags it is a pain in ass for developers to control and manage the complexity so that is where you know they want to educate developers or they want to educate architects on how to be careful how to categorize and this is where you will see people talking about you know four or five kinds of uh, toggles or flags release flag experimentation operational and permission so now actually yeah, this figure also will depict you know how long some flag should be there and uh, how how dynamic how fast these flags can be useful so this is again coming from thoughtworks uh, what is his name i forgot uh, thoughtworks founder martin fowler martin fowler so it it comes from his uh, website uh, but uh, it's like again a guideline you know yeah if you really go to the industry there may be 100 other classification they come but just remember that you know any flag if you define you give a context of life to it context of dynamic how fast it should change and when it should be removed so that is the core of this slide so never keep too many flags for life permanent flags so that way yeah, the, when you really think about defining a new flags to handle the use cases make sure you know whether it is a short term right term or long term and how fast it should change and whether it should change manually or you know it it gets that that trigger happens automatically so both all these three if you keep in mind you already start understanding what is the developer complexity involved in you know complying to all this so added to that you know i also classify it you know we, this flag see any application now you have too many modules you if you want to make a flag relevant to one area it could be web you know where you can talk about desktop web or mobile web in that desktop you have mobile you know browser based and in a mobile you have native application and hybrid application once you say react uh, native i mean you have flutter in hybrid cordova so that we you know there is again you know yeah one one thing we are saying is you know yeah just at architectural level think about you know how fast it should change and um, uh, how, how many categories you know you should take care but in the categories you, you will also get another complexity whether i am doing it in the front end back end and if if the application has got you know microservices which are developed in c sharp java and i mean then it, there is no never ending you know in fact as, as a code doctor i always say flags is a horrible technical debt but when you really look at the use cases it looks like that you know we have to use flags and those flags you know we have seen it here one level of complexity other level of complexity if you specify that you know this flag will only help in the server area there are could be some flags in the mobile area so that we you know it it could be a flood of uh, flags be very very careful in defining it, you know the flags so that we you know whoever is an architect of this product uh you should know that you know yeah who defines it who uses it who manages it and what is the lifetime uh so maybe yeah they, again industry talks about you know some of the life i mean i think uh, they are giving some timeline when you say it's a permanent so permanent is there in the throughout the life of the product you know permission also you know, when you make a change somebody has to approve it before it gets applied so that way you know your yeah, kill switch and permissions you you still think that you know 
they are very key things and then they have to be very well controlled in fact kill switch also should be one kind of permission enabled and when you want to only work in the devops area where operations team then make sure that you know you stabilize the feature and then remove that flag permanently and when you want to experiment make sure you know those experiments are not more than 40 days so that way you know feature flag is good if you know how to use it and then remove them once the use is over so please keep that in mind feature flag is not a feature uh, if you keep it permanently it is a very very bad technical debt so now coming to yeah let's see you now what, what what people are talking yeah i think yeah, really, i think uh, what uh, myself and uh, arvind was talking so in the context of development how does feature flags help so this is where you know most of the released related feature flags where you know that trend is you know yeah you saw that you know we had you know one microservice one uh, git repository but now people are feeling that you know having 200 repositories is a pain that's why i uh, mean people want to f come back to mono repo and that's where you know re feature flags would really help where you have a single uh, trunk and uh, developers can you know commit it and then uh, in case you know they don't want i mean i think the problem with uh, mono repo is you know if too many commits are there uh, delayed then you know the mono repo is again a bad thing because uh, everybody is trying to spend time in merging so now it is encouraged for in a mono repo for people to make sure they commit very often that way in case you know the release flags you know if there are developer only they can write the code put some flag, commit it, so that they have some time to really mature it. But at the same time, others who are really working on it, they have a chance to get the updates from you. And they have to be very, very short-lived. Whenever you think about release flags, make sure you know they are very, very short-lived. And then again, you know, if you go still dig, you know, you can also define some for development, some in the integration uh, space, testing, uh, testing space, staging, production. But I think, yeah, I would still say don't try to have, because it gives a flexibility, don't try to have too many. In fact, we have seen even in spring, people talk about configuration hell. And this feature flag is actually adding to that hell. But again, just as a developer, I wanted to pickle your mind that you know there there is a concept of you know new requirements and one way of implementing is using feature flags and if you know the feature flag is one way you should also know what where all it should be used and how complex it can become because of so many you know uh, variables uh, involved in you know how how you, you can use it So canary release is again, you know, yeah, you you want to, I mean, you want to make sure uh, that you know, uh, as per the user traffic, uh, users uh, more and more, uh, uh, I think you know, more and more features are coming, in more and more releases are happening. We want to make sure that you know, you first try it with you know, few users, and then once it is stable enough, you roll out to more users. So, or you know, you sometimes you know, yeah. Once you think it is stable, yeah, make and make make more and more users get the same code base. So otherwise, you know, you you end up in big rollouts. See, rollback is a good feature, but why do you even can you avoid that also? So that is a way, you know, it is again, you know, as a part of DevOps where you know they try to roll out to few hardware, you know, hardware servers, which are which may be serving few few users, and then slowly you move it, you make the code completely version two. So here also, like yeah, again, here also, that's all. This work is again controlled by feature flags. And genuinely now, because the products have become very, very complex, the experimentation flags are a must for even product manager, where you know he wants to understand users' feeling early, or what works with the users in what UI, you know. So this is where we should also allow developers should enable develop you know, our project manager to make sure that you know he is able to experiment safely and that's where developers will give few experiment with the experimental flags they, they will make two or three implementations and then give them the respective flags and let product manager you know or devops uh, whoever is the one in coordination with devops 
is able to experiment and get some insights. So that's what is, you know, that's a, a class where you are to classify that toggle as an experimentation toggle. And there also like, you know, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, you know, if you have 10 experiment, you know, you want to eye on, you know, two of them, you know, the, from 10, you know, you would have come to two and those two also, you want to take it to next level where you really work with real, real product uh, consumers, roll out 50% to class A users, 50% to class B. Maybe that both of them are required, but you know, the kind of users, um, may vary because you know sometimes you know not one feature would be accepted by millions of users maybe you know so youngsters may want a you know, feature b and somebody beyond 30 years or 40 years they may want you know, uh, feature a so that way you know you need to again i want you to see all these are the requirements of building a strong products and th that is why you know the way to discover strong products the way to arrive at strong product that's where you need to enable as a developer, know that, you know, these are all is, I have to give that features so that others can arrive at it and then give the feedback. So that's another experimentation is A and A, B testing. And dark launches. So these are also, it's little more, you know, I mean, some, some of them look similar, but actually, you know, some, you don't want to even talk about some feature. But you just want to release it to small set of people, silently watch what is happening, and then you know get some feedback. And then you know if you want to remove it, you can remove it because it is never publicized or never said as you know uh, a feature. But this is where you can actually maybe if, if, if experimentation is generally you know if you have, you do it for a short time and then get some insight. But you may want to have more time then better is you know follow dark launches uh, feature flags and make sure you know it gets released uh, and observed with a dark dark, dark uh, keeping it uh, dark to many users and only few users occasionally getting some fat so so far clear hello yeah yes clear Okay. So now, so just one, one thing. Uh, when you talk about developing the use cases based on the new methodology, then obviously when you talk about something like your inputs, or the existing inputs on how the existing UIs actually work. So then obviously somebody must have done the research already on the user experience, right? Like taking inputs on the existing user experience and then analyzing the inputs and then coming up with the use cases. So that sort of thing. Wouldn't that be correct would i be correct in stay saying that oh yes uh, definitely you know, all these are happening uh, but the, the kind of dynamism required the kind of changes required have changed rapidly right see now in the okay. previous world people had 3 months to say that you know i will work with so many people and arrive at a ui screen but that is too late, right? In the current world, they want to you know, have a release as, you know, yeah, maybe not more than two days, three days, or one week. That, what you mean is from the agile, with the <coughs> advent of agile and uh, sprint and all that. Yeah, it could be agile, but it could also be complexity or user expectations would have changed, right? Now, le let's say that, you know, as an engineer or in a UX designer, somebody has done some survey, got some information, and then they said this UI is good. Now, would that UI stay for long as good? Right. Maybe after three months, we should again have another, you know, uh, another survey and then they will say this is shabby. For example, take a browser. Browser in the initial days with graphics was so good, right? Yeah. But now people are saying, you know, videos are bad, you know, they want this resolution, that resolution. That way it is a never ending tussle to catch up with user expectations. Yes, what you said was more an engineering approach, thinking that you know engineers have a control on you know, the timelines. But now this has become a you know, combination of business and engineering where engineering gives them flexibility and business also does some experimentation, you know, some feedback the way they want. 
so that way you know maybe in the next cycle you know yeah i mean developer thinks that you know maybe as yes, this flag i will remove it. see uh this flag i will remove it because now this is no more needed that that means the life of that code also is becoming shorter at the same time when you are developing you know as a developer you are also not bound that you know this ui is permanent you would expect that this ui can change rapidly but in the old yes, way so the, what what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying is if that sort of thing the time scales and the time frames also adjust then the way of managing the whole thing has to also change exactly exactly yeah it is going to the next like, level of you know yeah it is going to the next level of users yeah. also start impacting very dynamically yes you're right that way yes all right that's there. what exactly that was exactly my it was answer. there but it is going yeah. to the next level now the cycles are shorter and the whole thing gets more iterative in exactly. okay thank yeah. you sir. <coughs> i'll be busy so this is again operation yeah we talked about kill switch where you know yeah if something is happening you know you i mean like as a developer i'm i'm releasing a feature yeah now it is you not only depend on qa but you also give it as a feature uh, where you know with some flag enabled that feature totally gets you know uh, disabled and rest of the application will start working or you know yes as a fallback uh, into the previous state now this is a developer is trying to think not as a permanent you know yeah it's like it is not like uh, sculpting a god statue he is thinking that you know it's a living being yes sometimes you know it may be needed sometime it may not be needed and that sometime it may be needed or not needed is controlled by someone else so that is that is becoming a feature now and you can use it for yeah i think you know unfinished you know, mobile application roll out so maybe you want to say you uh, again as i said yeah the one of the thing these are all related uh, you have a mono repo now and you still need to get a feedback from qa then you know you can beat a new code and then you know build for qa with qa flag enabled so that they can only see the feature not others so that way again as i said i know being a code doctor you know i have encouraging flags but you know, but i want you to see it as a requirement there could be more implementations coming in a different way but currently people what feature flag is the most popular but i'm sure there could be more you know i think you know we are talking about dynamic pluggability which i think we will also get clarity in 6 months this is where i think polymorphism will really really help Uh, but at least yeah most popular very insane way of implementing this requirement now is actually feature flag but i don't want to encourage too many flags or make sure that you know that's not a permanent way there could be much better ways which will be coming in future right so again here also like when you want to really you know uh, think about you know now one one way, one place we have seen about uh, new uh, um, new code and old code but then you can also use uh, load balancer to shift traffic as and when you want in both the versions and then you know take more time and make sure that you know it is really really stable enough and then you know yeah you have full confidence and then come back to development and then say this is what was my observation and then you know yeah you you decide it now you see more roles are coming more flexibility is given to more people uh, at operation level uh, it is not like that you know in the previous world developer said i have released it now you die with it um, no more kind, kind of thing you have to interact with devops team you have to interact with product managers you have to really closely watch with what is happening in the production how they are trying to strategize uh, uh, being safe to millions of customers so sometimes you know yeah you may also want to give you know in a feature you want to see certain certain parts of the feature again you know some of them may look like you know yeah user management and user roles but again yes that's the same thing if you can apply at a feature level which is not stable where you want to really take a chance of experimenting and knowing it then you can apply similar thing with permission uh, i mean that's one way or you know when somebody makes a changes you make sure that you know there is a workflow which gets triggered because you know you cannot say that you know, 
uh, in case I mean the emergency shut down is a very very big call, right? Nobody should be just uh, uh, putting a flag and then you know it gets into a emergency situation. So that way, make sure that you know you also think about permission flag, which are well controlled, and then two three levels of manual and you know automation kicks in. And then yeah, maybe finally administrator has a full control to uh, accept or reject. So again, I'm only trying to say that new requirements have come, which developers get impacted. They also get a flexibility. For example, you know, previously they have to understand entire feature at once, which itself is a pain. And I keep I keep hearing developers saying, "Give me full requirements." But that is not possible anymore. Or you know, that can be handled much better by saying, "Okay, this much is the feature I have. I understood. I have committed to that level." However, yes, it is. It can be only seen by QA. Please make sure that at a build time, this flag is enabled. Now you see, I mean, that's where you know the developers are impacted. Development culture is changing, uh, and there is a need for change. That much, if you all of you understand, then I think you know you will be able to update. You know how developers are supposed to implement future, feature new features with you know catching up with you know current trend and current uh, uh, requirements at a bigger level. So the beauty of this is, you know, now that you know that people saw that you know new use cases are required, where you know DevOps, developers, QA, and many others have to collaborate and provide a dynamic production code. When I say dynamic production code, code is same, deployment is same, but it can be morphed and managed differently by some kind of management tools. That is where uh, you will see that there is a need for platforms which will help you. Once the developer puts that flags, we should be able to see them. Uh, how, what is the current state? Which one is to be enabled? Which one has to be disabled? So that's where you will see that feature management. You know, uh, uh, platforms are very very popular. I will talk about few of them. And it is not only manage uh, having a single view of all these flags uh, to view and control or manage them, but you also need to know why this flag was enabled, and that's where even these platforms are supposed to integrate with the respective Jira tickets, Jira features, uh, uh, I think Jira discussions. That way, it is a very very big work. It is not a flag. It is a lot more than you know flag because it is making engineering uh, uh, much more heavy. Uh, but at the same time, giving the flexibility required for products to earn money at scale. So there are a lot many features of uh, platforms. I have listed a few of them and I will also demo use one of them. I think AWS also has got, uh, it calls it as AWS config and then Azure app configuration. Uh, Launch Darkly is very famous. I will demo that to you. And I think yeah, visual uh, website optimizer also I like them. You know, for some of these, each, each one of them have uh, their own strength and weakness. So now again, yes, you know, we only talked about feature uh, flags, uh, but actually, yes, you know, it, it is not. It need not be flag. It could be boolean. It could be you know type of string or you know it could be JSON. It can go on. You know that way. You know it is. I mean I think somewhere I see. Uh, all of you know about anybody knows about uh, uh, business process uh, management tools BPM men. Have you heard of BPM? No. Heard okay. of it, but not sure what. What are the tools? Yeah, basically, you know, yeah, they want to avoid developers. See, that's one way of looking at it, or they want to develop visually. So I take that part of that value of BPM rather than saying replacing developers, because the requirements can change left and right. In any product, it I mean that's where you need engineers. You don't need monkey coders. So now the con some concept of BPM gets applied with you know these platforms which are trying to manage where you define some variables. You, I mean those variables are I just listed boolean and string, but each of them have you know uh, 
many variations. It is not just one variation. Uh, that's what is the terminology they use. Maybe once we and then uh, let me demo you this application. So so far, are we clear? Yeah, good. Okay. So now this is where you know I have an application where you know we talk about uh, uh, whether user has clicked or you know what is the rollout should happen. You know, uh, you can give uh, you can define a, a rollout. And uh, see, I have actually defined it as 90% time. You know, whenever somebody asks for what is the state of this flag, you say, yeah, 90% of the time it should be true, 2% of the time it is false. So now you see that BPM exactly helps you to define such kind of rules. So that, you know, that the end application which gets generated is actually, you know, is able to dynamically perform based on those contexts where control is on the BPM and administrator or, you know, whoever is uh, what uh, wants to shape the end results. So similarly, I can show you a global attribute where it can be always. So it could be always true or false. But in this case, I also gave for only for Bob, you make it true. So is this UI enough uh, descriptive? Where we are saying global Boolean flag. And for the user, when 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 he gives, you know, when the value of that user key is equal to Bob, then it is true. Otherwise, the default value for rest of them is false. Now, these conditions, you know, yeah, actually, you know, coming over and above how a global Boolean flag is interpreted by the developer. But how this how this flag have to change again, you know, you, you are getting a workflow, you have a lot of control. Uh, but again, it is a control at the same time. It is a responsibility of some other role to understand and then manage them. So, yeah, you, if you want to have a different uh, message for each user, then you can also give some kind of condition so that your program can take these inputs and then uh, behave differently for different users. Let me show the code. So now actually I have. Uh, so we defined some flags. We gave some workflow on when they should be enabled, when they should be stopped. Now, as a programmer, yeah, we are able to you know. Uh, I mean, in fact, as a programmer, we should have, we should have behave differently depending on that value. But to make sure that you know we are able to achieve, uh, we are able to get whatever is the configured uh, values uh, from launch darkly. Then you can test it out here. I have three users: Alice, Bob, Charlie. See, you see, Bob, his global value is true for others. It is false. And then whenever somebody clicks, I want to make sure, you know, launch directly returns true. Next time it returns false. So again, yeah, if you really see, I've shown you three implementations. My, but you know, for now, you just focus on launch directly. You could implement the same. I mean, launch directly is one of the platform. But for Java users, you have multiple ways of, you know, doing it. Uh, but I think this this uh, shows that you know you can integrate with LAN directly as per the workflow, whatever is the current value, you get it. Uh, this part of the demo is clear. So you're saying uh, the app is already deployed without rebuilding or redeploying your controlling it. Uh, exactly. Yeah, it is a runtime. Yes, you're right. I'll show you the code also. See now, let let's say that yes, you know, yeah, this is my uh, server which is running, boot run. Uh, yeah, I think let, let's see that you know whatever uh, we want to say feature flag. So I want to now make uh, feature flag uh, false for everybody, right? Or you have any rules to try? We can try that rule. 
I want to delete this rule. Bob was, is no special. So for everybody, uh, yeah, if you're targeting, uh, default rule is false. Okay. So yeah, default rule is, uh, I think when you're targeting is on, default value is false. If I say off, then targeting this rule will apply. But anyway, I have it on, which means for all the three users, global flag should be false. I'm saving it. And then I go to the same application and see what happens to. Uh, see now even for Bob, it has become false. Previously it was true. So for Alex also it is true. Charlie also it is true. Maybe I we can do one more experiment where uh, we can say that you know keep the targeting off that means you know yeah take whatever is the targeting off this rule should apply then for all of them it will be true see immediately it gets reflected for all of them it is true so that way you know yeah as a step you no know, yes as an architect you should define flags uh, both on the paper uh, as well as in the platform and then you know make sure you know as a uh, as a developer you are able to access whatever is the platform state as it is so that now you have a way to manage how it should behave differently and that's where i can share, take you to the code nikhil has a there. question meanwhile yeah go ahead, go ahead nikhil Nikhil, you have a question? Okay, maybe not. Uh, go ahead, uh, Raja. Okay, fine. So now what we are saying is, you know, now you will you will have a chance to define an interface, feature flag interface, where you know you you don't want to control the state of that, but you want to give that state to somebody who wants to operate at a platform level which could be product manager, which could be QA, which could be uh, DevOps team, or it could be someone else. Uh, but, you know, yeah, you can define, you know, uh, your own interface. And then, you know, yeah, I see you know, when we say, yeah, I think you can also define which implementation you want to. I think, you, I mean, this again, we try to be a little more cautious that, you know, what happens, you know, tomorrow if launch darkly is not good, we want to go to someone else. So that we know we have three implementation here. FF4J is one way of implementing this service. And uh, Launch Darkly is another way where they give you SDK. You talk with that SDK, get it from online. And then, you know, yeah, so you just read those flags. So whatever is your implementation and toggle jet is another way. Um, where they are, you can also define some things and then you can define your activation strategy. So now somebody gives my strategy is 50% or 20%. Now you, whatever you want to do with that strategy, make sure that, you know, you get that, you know, you can implement the strategy and then depend on that strategy. So that way developers work, you know, for non-functional requirements is growing day in and day out. So it is, I mean, I don't know. Now, even to differentiate something is a feature, something is a non-functional requirement is becoming so tough. Right. Once you have implementation and then you have an interface. Now, this is where you have to think about, you know, yeah, maybe a, a very rudimentary way of is, Yeah. If the flag is open, then, you know, return something. If a flag is, you know, uh, this again in a very horrible technical debt approach. But there are, you know, bring does give you some, you know, much more, uh, uh, way of you know uh, dynamically getting it based on the innovation handler. This is also not a very readable code. Uh, we are also working little more on this, but you will try to see from you know uh, uh, at a bean level you want to say you know I have two beans. You define a bean interface and then let the bean service decide de depending on um, uh, whether flag is enabled or not which bean to be called. So that way, you know, I think code is becoming more complex, more, more, uh, uh, 
I mean, it is, sometimes it gives feature, but it is becoming more complex to manage. So that way, which feature flags you have to worry about pluggability. You should also worry about how to read those flags. And then, yeah, you can always, uh, I mean, it's like, then the rest of it is your application where you can always see what is that you want to do, which method should be called when. So, so far clear? Yeah. 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 So a couple of questions. See, typically in software, we normally come across something called scaffolding or boilerplate code. So usually we want to avoid this code, abstract it away so that we can focus on the main application logic, the business logic. So all the boilerplate code should be abstracted away. Now with feature flag, uh, won't it be the case that we are again going back and mixing feature flag related code and the application logic? So managing or maintaining this code becomes a bit complex. Right, you're right. And that's where I said, you know, developers, uh, have to, uh, they will have to struggle with, you know, more complexity. But somewhere, you know, yeah, if you think, you know, my code should enable A-B testing, do you want to classify it as a feature or non-feature? Uh, that's where I think, you know, you have to think more. Because it is becoming so normal that you cannot say it, it is no more a non-functional requirement. It is a functional requirement. So that way, the definition of boundary of functional and non-founder is changing because uh, exactly like, you know, I, I remember the days when writing a build script, there was a separate team for us. Now, does any developer feel that, you know, to write Maven, Gradle, or, you know, Python script to build and deploy? Do they feel that, you know, it is developers to be done or, you know, someone else will do it? developers only will do it generally the tool will take care of it automatically nowadays right but still you know they are responsible right if somebody says product manager says that i need a kill switch so do you want to see it as a feature you know, uh, this is do you want to separate it as you know or do you want to still classify it as a, you know, a functionality or a non-functional requirement Let's say in a stock market of such a such a volume, where there is so much of stake. So yeah, the point I wanted to give is yes, you know, we can always say that, you know, I mean, yeah, I want to add a value to business, but what is the definition of value to the business? At least to me, I feel it, you know. I mean, there is nothing called, you know, non-functional or functional requirements. Everything is required from customer perspective. So far, people have been avoiding performance, you know, scalability. But, you know, you cannot, you know, for example, you know, yes, if you are doing a heavy lifting, and maybe I don't want this heavy lifting during a peak time. So that becomes actually a feature. It is no more a non-functional requirement because that's the way. Otherwise, they have to end up in removing a lot of features and then rebuilding it and redeploying it. That's more horrible work. So Arvind, did I convey it? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So that I way, think I think yeah. this whole software. terminology itself has to be revamped. What exactly. we used to call as non-functional requirement, that term itself no longer makes sense. Exactly, because this shift right is a requirement which nobody thought that that will come. Somebody else will know. I, I mean, I, I want my application to work, you know, in a different form based on the controls given, you know, managed by someone else. That is a full requirement of a product now. But again, yeah, some of these, you know, we should not worry. We are actually having, you know, less than few. 100k customer or i don't know a few you know customers but if you really want to scale at a cloud scale these are all must
So this is another one where, you know, I, I yeah, another one, I'll just demo it. Uh, yeah, this is another one, Unleash. They also give you, you know, it's again, another nice dashboard where I liked, you know, they're talking about how many release flags, how many experimentation operational flags. Who has created? Now you see it is a different role altogether coming in. You as a developer, one way you are freed that because of the changing requirements, you are not struggling, uh, but you are giving it as a feature for somebody to manage it. And then, you know, same code behave differently. That actually is a you know, feature given by developers for them to you know, uh, do what they want. So that way, I think, you know, yeah, I mean, I think um, there's a never ending complexity. One side you kill it, other side it opens up. Uh, this feature flags is exactly you know, um, the right thing to talk about. Uh, yeah, I think the demo is over. In summary, I think, you know, instead of seeing it as a feature flag, uh, features with flags or, you know, feature pluggability or feature experimentability, please see it as that way. I think yeah, what Arvind asked, it is a question you should ask whether feature with flag, is it a feature or is it a non-functional requirement? And my recommendation is if you are a cloud developer, see it as a, a functional requirement because that is required for to manage uh, to transform your code dynamically based on changing demands of business. So yeah, if you really see it as an engineer which feature flag, your life is more help. Technical debt is given. So be very careful, but look at it as features with flags as one approach or features with modularity, feature modular way of attaching and detaching. So that we know you are actually becoming better at you know uh, refactoring, better at bringing out modularity, better at you know defining your interfaces more smartly. So as a developer, please look at it not as a flag, yeah, another if condition, but really look at it as you know feature pluggability. I think a yeah, last minute then. Yeah. It is not always the right answer. Please make sure you know yeah see. Uh, if you, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of Spring uh, code, you know, they had, you know, more than, you know, 5,000 lines of configuration. Uh, but that was a hell. Now, you know, we are uh, officializing flags and because flags is, it gives you flexibility. If you start defining everything as a flag, you are again gone. Excessive uses of this, more, more sure that, you know, messy code base. It can be very counterproductive because, you know, it is not about, I mean, let's say that, you know, you have a flag. If it is independent, it is good. But people can say that, you know, this flag and that flag and XYZ, uh, you know, JSON input, then you are gone. Because it is for you also, it is complex. And the guy who is managing it is also complex. So keep it simple. Make sure, you know, I think I would say, I think because I know the power of developers, I think short lived, I think they can definitely handle, but you know, mid and long lived, be, be very careful. And shift right testing is a real need. Uh, don't underestimate uh, the flexibility it gives for you and for the business. And yes, again, somebody is saying about it's a pressure cooker where if somebody says, you give me feature, feature, dump something with a flag. <laughs> let him say at least he will give you some time so that's another way of looking at it and i would always recommend yeah make sure that you know the management part of you know feature flags you depend on some external uh, products rather than building it yourself so this is what i had to say make sure that you know you are naming the flags properly giving a proper life managing you know killing them in after their life is over uh, but yes, it is a ever end, I mean, ending challenging, uh, never ending challenges for developers. Nothing called simple, nothing called complex, but everything is called professional needs. So make sure that you know you upskill your game as per the professional demands of the product. Right? That's what I have. So basically, I uh, make sure that you know. Uh, So make sure that you know yeah you are not even given two weeks of iterations you should be able to anytime integrate release i mean that that's the change coming into developers 
uh, where you know when somebody says I should be able to do something in that you know before and something after. So you should know you should be very confident of release your code anytime, every time. And that's where I, I bring in the concept of feature flaggability as a new NFR. Uh, but again, yeah. But unfortunately, it is still popular as feature flags. But I think yeah, the way to way to connect my thoughts on then industries, yeah, feature flaggability is the requirement developer should see. And yes, one kind of implementation which is popular is feature flags approach, putting you know conditional uh, execution of the code. That's all. Thank you, Raja Nagindra. Uh, any questions from the audience? It was a very uh, informative session and the demo also made it uh, more interesting. Any questions or comments from the audience? There are some in the Q&A section. Oh, OK, let me see. Oh yeah, it applies to any part of the code. It could be UI. It could be yeah. That's where I showed you know, you know where you know you have many multiple uh, code bases, which you know could be at application level. Their application also you can have front end, back end, database. So that way, yes, it can. This flag, I mean, uh, feature pluggability can come at any level. But yeah, be careful that you know yeah, just because it, it give it, somebody is saying you know somebody wants to ask for the flexibility, but be very cautious about implementing as a feature flag. Uh, <clears throat> can I just question, uh, I, OK, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just, um, before you Michael, ask, you seem, ask, I will, I will you answer seem to the be other covered. two questions. No, just other seem questions, to be can you just hold on? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, no problem. Yeah, yeah, we can so Nikhil has asked, is the code public? The stream is choppy. I am not able to look at the code. Not to worry, the recording will be on YouTube. That will be in uh, available in HD. So uh, you will be. Uh, what are some programming challenges in FFDD? So as I said, yes, you know, one side it gives you flexibility to you know uh, commit to release you know may trunk very fast. But you know, yeah, if you use too many uh, commits with too many flags, then you end up in another mess. So basically, you should know, I mean, you should use flags with a genuine or, you know, with a lot of maturity. And then secondly, again, yes, you know, other thing is, you know, now that, you know, it is becoming an industry trend, trend and project manager can may not give you, you know, even that much time. He says, why don't you commit something? Why don't you commit something? And yes, it is still an infant, you know, the kind of uh, dashboards what we are seeing are very in an infant stage. So that way, you know, there's long way to go to manage these platforms. But it has started uh, the catching up with, you know, multiple. Uh, uh, I mean, launch darkly is very famous, uh, but I think people may go for uh, Amazon uh, app config because they just want to be close with AWS you know, they are deploying on AWS. Uh, but yes, you know, from a developer angle, you will get flexibility. But if you misuse that flexibility, you end up in 10x technical debt. That much I can tell you. Hello. Question. Yeah, I think yeah, the other one, I think, you know, the Radha Krishna, whatever you asked, you know, I think yeah, the recording will be available. Um, I just uh, wanted to just uh, post this question. Uh, you are saying that Demopedia is, is, is only limited to technical. Right? Uh, so just in case we want to write maybe on other topics, let's say business analysis or let's say rational or some of the tools, let's say Altation, Jira, whatever related to maybe other spheres rather than strictening coding, programming, feature development, development or programming languages. Yeah, those kind of articles are all permitted. But the first uh -huh. one you said something about uh, business side, right? That is not permitted. Best, but, but things like, which one? 
which one my uh, my network is Sorry. poor uh, so i was uh, trying to say the business side of things is not permitted but the technical articles are okay okay like testing you're fine right yeah yeah we yes. already have an article on shift left for example and but we don't have an article on shift right which uh, no, no, other uh, raja other 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 yeah, yeah sure okay fine thanks thanks i appreciate it. yeah thanks talking about yeah yeah sure so yeah coming to nikhil's you know yeah for every flag with existing understanding of uh, being a boolean we multiply the uh, yeah, multiply the uh, possible states of the program by a factor of 2 all the states may not be valid you are right but from coming to domain side they may want to name it as xyz which may really mean true or false if you see this in a add rule you can always say that you know uh, your screen is not shared now okay so yeah what you can do is you know yeah see finally it may be true or false but from management perspective we can say that you know yeah maybe at at so and so time period it is actually you know yeah true then they can say morning evening so that way these are all called variations but still you know the whatever is the output could be uh still true and false so that way it is very destructive and then it easy for somebody to get it so that is that is where they call it as variation nikhil yeah i got it thank you uh that's all thank you yeah i hope you know i think a, a feature flag some kind of you know information is given use it to your advantage